Okay, hello, good evening folks, and welcome, welcome once again to Suzerain. <clears throat> Get myself comfy here. I don't know why I'm getting myself come for this. Could be a short stream. It could be bankrupt and finished within half an hour. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Good evening, Pete. Hurt cupboard. Welcome, welcome. How's our days been? Today has flown by. I don't. I don't know. I, just, I was looking at the time about ten minutes ago. I was like. Oh, it's 20, 20 past seven already? What in the hell? Yeah, when we play Kingdom of Rhesia. When you play when you when I play Kingdom of Rhesia, I'm gonna play as uh, a bad person. We played this one as a good guy? So I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, the next I'm gonna play the DLC as a bad one. Uh, we're a monarch, so it'll be fun to be a really nasty monarch, all power wielding. It's gonna be quite fun, quite a stark contrast to this playthrough, I feel. Anyway, uh, I talked about Liddles Coke. If there's any Aldis around you, yes, there's an Aldi that's literally a five-minute drive up the road. Uh, try River Coke. I take it that's a recommendation then. Is that is it is, is Aldi Coke just uh, pretty good as well? I've I've I've, I've drunk Little's Coke for the past year, two years coming up now, pretty much exclusively, bar barring a couple of special occasions where I get real Coke. But I've never had Aldi Coke, which is really bizarre because they're very similar, Little and Aldi, aren't they? So maybe I'll maybe I'll try it this weekend on Friday when I go to my friend's house rather than buying Little Coke. I'll go to the Aldi instead, get Aldi Coke, and try it. And if I don't like it, then I can just... To be fair, I'm getting real Coke anyway for the stream. You can't beat the real McCoy. But I do want to try the Aldi Coke, and they recommended it. Yeah, it'd be about 50p here too. I think the little Coke's gone up. It used to be 45p, it's gone up to 50, 52p I think it is now. How dare they? 52p for two litres of coke. It's it's quite it's, and it tastes pretty decent, and it's got about half the amount of sugar in it as regular cola. Because when I read the bottle on the, I was in a drunken stupor. I was at my friend's house maybe about three months ago, reading the labels of how much grams of sugars in a 200 mils of coke or whatever is 250 mils of coke, and it was absolutely ridiculous, like 26 grams. I was, I was actually quite... Oh, oh, no wonder it tastes so delicious. <laughs> it's just sugar in liquid form. Um, right. You fell asleep, Catherine. Oh, those danger naps. You know what? There was a time, if you remember, there was a time when I used to nap in an afternoon quite regularly. I don't do that anymore. And I don't know what's changed. Cause I used, it used to be like clockwork. I used to come home from work. I used to put my feet up. I'll tell you what changed. I tell you what changed, working from home is what's changed, because before when I used to do that, I used to work in the office five days a week, come to think of it, which is probably a lot more tiring than you realise. So now that we can work from home and we can balance our home and office life a bit better, I don't feel anywhere near as tired as I used to do in the afternoon. The need for an afternoon nap? No longer. Don't get me wrong, I still do sometimes fall asleep, but uh, nowhere near as regularly. Still recovering, hurt covered. Relaxing days. Well, again, once again, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some fun here tonight. Doctor Pepper. Oh no, I don't do, I don't do, I don't do sugar-free stuff. Zero sugar, sugar-free. No, oh, no. Ooh. It's got to have all the sugar in it for me. Ooh. Diet Cokes, Pepsi Maxes, diet this, diet that. Ooh, no, even the regular version. Don't get me started. You know my stance on this. You know my stance on this when it comes to talking about fizzy drinks in the UK um, and non-fizzy drinks too, since they brought that damn sugar tax in. 
ruined a lot of drinks for me. Anyway, we won't go there. Uh, right, let's dive in then. Yeah, we, we will dive in and see what befalls us today. See what more turmoil, what more awkward decisions we have to make. We're starting today's session on an awkward decision. That's if the game loads. Don't forget the game is a bit uh, glitchy now after the... Did I press the wrong button? Hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let's load that save, shall we? Did I press new game by mistake? Um, hang on, folks. What's happening here? If the game has now gone completely corrupt and we can no longer continue from where we left off, I am going to write to the developers. You have ruined my playthrough. No, I did click continue, I'm almost certain. Okay, let me just, uh, let's try this one. Try the one below it. I don't know what the difference between the two. Maybe we might have to just go through some stuff that we've already done, but uh, this is not a good sign. And if this uh, has corrupted and we can't play today, I am going to be so fuming that we're not streaming anything else. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Right, let's forget what, let's just... I don't want to click finish in case it overwrites anything. Um, the game seems to have broken, Shelley. Um, when we are trying to click on continue from where we left off, it's putting us to the character creation screen. So that DLC has completely broke the game by the looks of it. I reckon that the game, because we saved the game with all the glitches, I think it's crashed. Whereas when we loaded the game in the last session, we loaded it when we saved it before the glitches, if that makes sense. So I bet you if we load, if we load, from here, I bet it will work. If we load it from here, I bet it will work. Because this was saved before the, the thing. This was saved after the thing. Well, do you know what? Kind of means that we're going to have to play all of the game today and finish it, <laughs> if that's the case. Because if we can't save the game, and yeah, the game won't save properly post DLC, we could be an issue. I don't think we can deactivate the DLC. I, I looked in the, I looked during the last session. I went to Steam to see what I could see, but I couldn't see anything obvious. Uh, right, let's just finish this and uh, look, just shut the hell up, will you? No, look, it's oh, hang on. Oh, it's just doing all this. It's just doing all this bit again. Look, we, we look. We still got the same stats. We still got the same news. Oh, hang on then. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Slow the save. Slow the save. It, it might be okay. It's just a bit glitchy. It's just a bit issuey. But 
the game looks to be where we left off, so that we just have to create a character again. It's fine, we can do that. But we have to pick our election manifesto again. Don't know how this is going to affect the game, but we'll keep going. <laughs> oh my god. Right, it was, was it Trilby? No, it was that. Facial hair? Was it that? Attire? It was that. Background office, accessories, glasses. Okay, folks. Uh, my computer crashed. My computer di my computer died. <laughs> That's what happened. Bear with me. The game crashed my computer. Uh, so this is not a good sign at all. Uh, bear with me. So not only is the game glitched, the game is crashing my PC now. This, this could be a, this could be a very bad sign. I wonder if I actually purchase the DLC and, and, and install the DLC, it might be better. I haven't actually um, installed the DLC yet, you see. Maybe I should try that. Maybe it's the game's way of forcing you to... Uh, to do that. Right, we'll go again. We go again. Oh dear me. This is not a good sign at all. Right, let's just see what happens. Let's try and get past the character creation as quickly as possible. Get into the game itself. Maybe it's just coincidence. If you believe in coincidences. Right, okay, finish. Yep, that's fine. Uh, uh, planned economy, yep, thank you. Uh, uh, remain neutral. Thank you. Um, what did we say for immigration policy? Can we remember? Did we say to retain a relaxed immigration policy or did we say toughen? What anybody can remember? I've forgotten. I'm sure we said toughen, didn't we? Did we say toughen? Immigration laws. I didn't expect to have to remember this. <laughs> Which is a great start. I think we said, I'm sure we said toughen. I'm sure we did. I mean, I don't know if it's going to affect anything because it's kind of weird that it's making us trick pick these again. You see, it's obviously a glitch with the with the situation. But uh, do you know what? We'll, st we'll stick with Tuffin. Uh, we had a education focus. Uh, we are sure about our decisions. Oh no, no, no. Okay, this is really, really bad. <laughs> this is. Can we not just click on stuff? Oh. It's making us do the prologue now. <sighs> Goodness me. Right, um, we'll try going through this. Let's see what happens. Uh, the, only other, the, only, the only solution, if this doesn't work, and this continues to be a muck-up, I can think of is to start the game from scratch off camera and get to exactly where we are now where we left off by taking the exact same decisions which is a very laborious task that I would I, I, I kind of I would do it though because I want to finish the game I was really enjoying it anyway we'll just we'll fly through this we'll fly through this 
Uh, God's sake. I mean, ultimately, we'll have to remember what we... Uh, we don't have to remember what we picked. Oh, we picked the oath. I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't think... Just, will this affect anything? Please repeat to me after me. I do solemnly declare and swear to the best of my abilities. Uh, uh, it's an honour. Okay, whatever. Dear bro brother, my fellow swords, brothers and dear, dear citizens, like uh, brothers and sisters, I look very eager. The idea of unity. If we stand together, we will prevail. And we will end the, I can't, well, I, I can't remember what the hell we said. We will change today. Wee and we wave. Fist is very too violent. That's Sergey. We don't. You know, we haven't been seeing Sergey for a little while, actually. Come to think of it, nice to meet you, Sergey. It's an honour. Okay, very good. Thank you. Maroon Palace, looking spiffing. This is definitely the news items from where we left off, but this is this is this is not the prologue. This is us accepting. This is this is the first day, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, being out of the nation. See you soon. Okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Ah, uh, oh, I just had some soup, and literally, I've been my stomach's been fine all day, and I've just had that little bit of soup, and it's now uh, paining me again. Oh, for God, right? Okay, so we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Oh, and look at that as well. The look, the icons are back. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. The icons are back at least. That's a good sign. Okay. Right, Le Chavin. We read this report. The National Business Council has reported a balanced energy market. Despite regional fluctuations, Le Chavin has maintained stable energy prices. Positive impact on local economy. This stability is fostering an encouraging business environment and promoting economic well-being among the populace. You don't think I've been able to place to a finish? No, I highly doubt it. Unless I literally went at the speed of light. See information. Oh, there you go. So we've got border reinforcement and we've got decreasing or decreasing poverty. So now we can click on all the all the city information that we couldn't see last time. Oh look, and we can we can close the city screens. So maybe they tried to implement a fix. Uh, it's still not 100 percent perfect, but it's at least it's better than it was last session. We can close down screens and we've got our icons back. Avery, we've got increased business and trade. It's positive. And Linkberg, we've got uh, increased business and trade. Estord, anything new there? Nothing new. Building border posts, of course. That's fine. Le Chavin, nothing new there. Okay, that'll do for now. Uh, right, overview. Anything politically that we have to be aware of that's changed? No? Right, good. So I think we're okay. Keep our fingers crossed, folks. Let's get past this turn and let's hope that everything works out. Right, first of all then, what have we got? We've got budget allocation of healthcare. Maybe we should um, do that after we've spent more of our budget on this Central Bank Reinforcement Act. So, here this was the decision we had to make. And the decision was, do we spend another budget to take us even into more debt uh, to, 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 to fund this Central Bank Reinforcement Act, which is led by none other than the Edith uh, uh, Central Bank Chairwoman, uh, Edith Agnock. Uh, it's looking to bolster the strength and stability of Sodland's national currency and bolster the overall economy. 
Uh, section 1 mandates the accumulation of foreign exchange reserves. By buying foreign currencies, especially those of Solomon's main trading partners, the central bank can exert more control over the value of our currency. Section 2 outlines the adoption of a prudent fiscal policy. By reducing the national debt and limiting budget deficits, the country can present itself as a more stable economic entity, attracting foreign investment and improving our credit rating, which in turn would enable us to borrow at lower interest rates if necessary. Section 3 proposes increased legal and informational support for industries with high export potential such as our emerging electronic sector in Gelsord, wine production in Boring and pharmaceutical manufacturing in Les Chaven. By increasing exports, the demand for our currency on the international market will rise, thus strengthening its value. We, we cannot in good conscience turn that down regardless of the, the state of our budget. And when we met with our business and economic partners in the last session, it wasn't it, wasn't it uh, Simon who said something about uh, going into more debt is a, is a viable option? <laughs> I'm sure he said something to that effect. So, going to more debt we shall. Hello Liv, welcome. So we're going to sign that. What happened? I don't know what happened. Oh, you'd gone away somewhere, didn't you? Because what happened was... Nothing had happened in the game to suggest that our growth line should have gone from positive to catastrophically negative. Uh, so it indicated to me that it was, it seemed to me like it was a game, a game led uh, event that caused that because we didn't do anything major. We didn't make any decisions that would lead to a, a massive downswing of, a, of the growth line. So it seemed to me to be some kind of event that happened out of our control so uh, yeah we're back in negative we're in negative four which is horrendous but hey we just signed a bill that could help us in the long term we'll see hey get them right policies central bank reinforcement act we have brought this in and we have fiscal protection measures long-term sustainability and growth two news articles they've already got wind Central Bank Act, a stronghold for Swordland. In signing the Central Bank Reinforcement Act, President Anton Rehn has bolstered Swordland's fiscal future. The act aimed at enhancing the stability of our national currency underlines the importance of prudent financial practices. By reducing national debt and maintaining foreign exchange reserves, we are fortifying our economic foundation. This strategic move upholds our sovereignty, securing Swordland's economic interest against foreign manipulation. The signing of the Central Bank Reinforcement Act is a blow to free market principles. In the committee's view, the new laws focus on accumulating foreign exchange reserves and bolstering domestic industries may limit the flexibility of dynamism of Sodland's economy. The act could discourage foreign investment and stifle competition. Article paid by Ventry City Free Trade Committee. Yes, well, we'll take that with a pinch of salt then, shall we? Right, very good. Moving on to DARE, where there is a budget allocation, what budget, of healthcare. <sighs> so having, we, having just uh, averted a crisis, we had a nightmare as a president that we had to, that we were living in Groundhog Day. Whoa, whoa, I've lived the first day again, all over again. What the hell happened? I had a dream that I was just starting back in office. It was very strange. And then having uh, been brought back to the realisation that we'd snoozed and fallen asleep head first on the Central Bank Act without signing it, we woke up and, oh my god, okay, we better sign this damn thing, signed it, sent it off, sighed a heavy sigh, realising uh, the state of our bloody budget, and then we decided to have some afternoon tea. Going through some newspapers, wondering uh, what the hell are they saying about us now? Hmm. When one of the headlines piqued our interest, it read polio crisis in Valen. We'd heard about this. We'd heard about this uh, recently, actually. We read about it in a briefing. Polio crisis. Polio is a really nasty disease. You don't hear of it as much anymore because, of course, you have the old polio vaccine nowadays, which I don't think was a vaccine. Wasn't the polio vaccine delivered under your tongue, if I recall correctly? 
was a long time ago. It was like year seven or something in high school. I'm sure it was polio that they put it under your tongue. But anyway, so you don't hear of it much anymore. But it was a really, really bad, uh, very, very bad illness. Uh, and there are still a handful of people in the world that have to live in these great big machines uh, because I had polio and it, it really uh, did something to them. They, they can't live without this machine. I can't, remember, I can't remember the name of the machine, but it's this great big, huge thing. And all the head is sticking out of it. Iron coffin. Is that what it's called? Iron lung, that's it. Iron lung. Yeah, iron lung. Literally. And all the, only the head sticks out. And they can't do anything other than have the head sticking out. And it's like, my God. And one chap that was in an iron lung uh, for about 60 years uh, passed away about two months ago. But yeah, horrendous. Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Um, that's polio for you. And I was correct. I remember talking about the, uh, the, the, the eclipse yesterday, because there was an eclipse in the US, of course. And um, I, seem to, I said, I seem to recall, I'm sure the last t total eclipse in the UK was when I was, uh, you know, around about sort of 12, 13, 14 years old. I can remember being stood in my friend's drive looking at it. And it was in 1999, where I was 16. So I was a little bit, a little tiny bit out, but I was correct-ish, you know, 1999. I remember it well. I was with my sunglasses on, trying to look at the thing, because they say, don't look at it, don't look at it, it could still, be, could still blind you. So I put sunglasses on and tried to uh, look at it. Anyway, <clears throat> there's a knock on the door. Pascal, the Minister of Health, who we have had not much dealing with, uh, comes in, followed by Lucian. Ah, Mr. President. It's time for the scheduled healthcare meeting. Good afternoon. Hmm. Please be seated. Afternoon tea. Care for some? Yesterday I made a red. I finished streaming Alan White yesterday, and um, I made a very delicious cup of tea. I don't usually. I've tried to avoid drinking caffeine before bed, but yesterday, with the, with those stomach pains and stuff, I thought I'm going to make myself a chai tea, uh, Indian style kind of masala tea. So I crushed up all the cardamom pods and the and the and the, and the card the the, um, the cinnamon and the ginger uh, and the um, cloves and uh, put it in a pan with some water, some tea bags, brewed it all up, put the milk in. A couple of spoons of sugar. Oh, it was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Did it sit on my stomach? I can't remember. Tasted good, though. <sighs> right, anyway, take your seats. Okay, so Pascal <clears throat> delves into uh, his suitcase and pulls out some documents and puts them on the table. And then glances to the newspaper that I was reading, which is very rude. Very troubling news from Valen, Mr. President. I have just returned from a meeting with our top scientists on the matter of polio. It seems to be spreading. Yes. So why am I just learning this from a newspaper? We, we learned it from a briefing, to be fair, so... Um... Yeah, what preparations are afoot, Mr. Benny Wall? We have notified all of our healthcare staff, especially the ones closer to the Valen border. Unfortunately, these are also the more rural areas where we lack equipment and staff. What I was told by our researchers was that with the current infection rate, there will soon be millions of people affected by polio. We need to be ready for any possibility. Oh dear. If you're going to be asking for money, Mr. Benny Wall, as much as this is a very serious and sensitive issue, we can't spare any. I doubt it is that serious yet, says Mr. Gallard. I like that sound. I like the sound of that, Mr. Gallard. I like the sound of that. Always nice to put a bit of perspective on things. Stop being a drama queen, Manuel. 
Regardless, uh, back to the topic, Mr. Bennywall. Pascal put on his reading glasses and went through the documents. He didn't say anything for a whole minute. Knowing Lucian, he probably timed it. Uh, Mr. Bennywall? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Let's start. He put the papers down, cleared his throat, and looked at me. In general, the Ministry is somewhat content with the budget decision that was made. At least we didn't get a cut. But I'm still happy that the administration continues to support healthcare at the same level as before. Though this limits our options significantly. <clears throat> yes, you will appreciate, Mr. Bennywall. It was not a decision that I made lightly. I had to, what shall we say, balance the books. I am sure, Mr. President, I'm not questioning that, but I don't see many ways out of this particular situation. We need funds to bring improvements. As you know, I have been preparing a new privatisation programme that would create funds through selling of unused ministry property and some extra taxes. I know of this too, Pascal, but this goes against our economic doctrine. Additionally, health is a key sector people expect to have in public hands. Aside from creating additional funds, there is a long-term problem with privatisation in a country like Swordland. Uh, care to expand, Lucian, just for clarity's sake? Oh no, we're not investing in health, Pete. There's no, there's no, there's no risk of that happening. <laughs> this is one decision I'm quite happy to turn down. <laughs> yeah, not happy to turn down putting money into a banking bill, but happy to turn down, uh, you know, putting money into saving people's lives. That's how we roll. <laughs> oh, we're not... Oh, the, the, the Swordish NHS, yeah. Goodbye. Right. Uh, Man City, what would you want to against one against Madrid away? That's a pretty decent start. What is it? Is it the quarterfinals? Or is it the set? <gasps> This is only delicious. I've been fine all day. I've had one cup of soup and I started streaming and my pain has ramped right up. Oof. Okay, I'm after that. I'm gonna ring the doctors tomorrow, I think now. It's, it's, it's really, uh, it's been five days. I've had much water today. I have had about, about three quarters of a litre. Look, I've got my second bottle here. Oh. two litres yesterday which is a lot for me uh, <clears throat> right yes Lucian please as the president winces are you all there sir yes I'm fine Lucian it's fine Just please press on what about the problems okay well, Lucian giving us a look huh? hell? Uh, <clears throat> right yes people are already lacking proper health care even though it is free what happens when you privatise Prices increase as state hospitals close due to sales. We will prevent the worst case scenarios. There needs to be healthy structural improvements in this sector. This is not Arcasia nor Lesbia. You are talking about Swordland in which the healthcare is free for now. We have people who have their lives depending on a service that is free to them. Messing with that structure Will definitely hurt us politically in the future. That I know for sure. But, as always, Mr. President, the choice is yours. Uh, well, very easy choice, Lucian. You speak it plain. We are keeping the healthcare in state control. We do not want privatization ruining our structure and endangering core health services. Nor do we want profiteering. As you wish, the health services shall remain in public hands. Good choice. Well, that wraps up our discussion for now. Very well. Fruitful meeting nevertheless. Nice and short. 
Lucian has been a bit more assertive today than usual. I mean, he usually does give some sound and sage advice, but it seems like he's, com he's like completely against the privatization of the healthcare. <laughs> What's hurting so bad? Oh, it's my, it's my, it's, I don't even know what, how to describe it because it's my lower abdomen region, I suppose is the best way to describe it. I did a little bit of Googling yesterday because I've also got the situation with a bit of like the, uh, the, the burping, a bit of wind. Uh, and apparently it was quite a common, uh, common uh, um, symptom of stomach ulcers. Not that I uh, think I've got stomach ulcers, but anyway, I'm not going to self-diagnose. I don't tend to do that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Just the way I like it. No, we shall thank them both for their time. Thank you for the meeting. If meetings have to take time, they have to take time. But short and sweet is usually better. Pascal gathers his documents and leaves along with Lucian. Googling is a dangerous choice, yes, but it can be useful because it was when I was coughing up that blood. It was little tiny, tiny, tiny little specks two years ago now. Just over two and a half years ago, two and a half years ago. And I thought nothing of it. And I'd had this situation for, what, two, three weeks? Uh, and it wasn't until uh, after having it for that length of time that I thought, you know what, I better just Google this symptom because it's a bit, it's a bit dicey. I've had it three weeks, I've coughed up little tiny bits of blood. It's got a little tiny bit worse now. Hmm, I'll just Google it. And it was Google that said in big red banners on the NHS website ring your uh, GP immediately I was like oh my god that's quite so serious so I did so that was quite a useful uh, bit of googling because if I didn't google it or didn't heed or whatever you know I could have gone on for another two or three weeks uh, uh, with blood clots in my lungs and not realised it but anyway we shouldn't digress away from health concerns for now. <laughs> Which is quite quite apt, considering we were just speaking to the health minister. <laughs> Mr. Health Minister, have you got any solutions for this dicky stomach I've got? I'm there wincing and you're sat there talking about bloody privatisation. Bring me a doctor, will you? <laughs> Make yourself useful. Uh, right, anyway. Uh, Republic of Valen. Oil trade, trade agreements... They got those last time. The Raider Border Report. How's the old Operation Bear going? Bear Trap. Chief of the Armed Forces, Valken Kruger, reported that the Vesek Armed Forces are moving north towards the town of Vernon. On their way, many brutish villages were assaulted and the initial reports indicate a high death toll. That's not quite um, dealing with rebels in the mountain passes, is it? flattening villages oh dear as they are approaching close to the border Vezek army's movement will be observed closely many displaced refugees from the battles have been seen moving towards the Swordish border they have been turned around forcefully to ensure the complete defense of the border now I reckon if we'd have turned around during that meeting with our military chiefs and said go easy on the refugees will you go easy on the refugees let them in they're not rebels. They're not mercenaries. Let in refugees. Uh, I reckon this might have been a slightly different report. But anyway. Yeah, there's been a couple of decisions that we've made as president that we, if we had our time again, we'd probably change our tact. But that's the nature of life. And just like life, sometimes you don't get a second chance. Anyway, let's carry on. Uh, we have news article from Geopolitical. Thousands protest the new governor of Heliland. So Heliport took to the streets. Thousands took to the streets to protest the Agnolian government's increasing control over Heliland's administration following the appointment of a new governor. Oh dear. Demonstrators protested the Agnolian government's decision to appoint a governor from the Agnolian mainland without holding any local elections on the island. Lagslandian leader Chancellor Hegel was quick to condemn the decision. Majority of the residents of the island still claim Valg heritage 
or how Vagsland and ancestry. Experts say that the increasing tensions between Agnolia and Vagsland prompted the Agnolian authorities to make this decision with an aim to increase their control over the island. That is not good. Tensions are mounting. Tensions are mounting there. It's a good job that we didn't ally with Agno Ag Ag Agland, Agnolia, Agland? No, Agnolia. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we, we didn't want to get involved in that mess. We just wanted to get involved in another mess instead. That involves flattening bloodish villages. One mess or another. Okay. Talk with friends Richter on the upcoming vote. There's no way we are getting any NFP votes out of this conversation. But hey, if he wants to talk, let's talk. The preparations for the new constitution were nearly complete. Soon we were going to propose it in the Grand National Assembly. A huge step for our administration. But we desperately needed more support. That's why I had invited Friends Richter for a chat about the upcoming vote. He and his party held the key to our success. Oh, I'm getting my people the wrong way round. Friends Richter is the piff person. Oh, in that case, this is a cordial meeting. <laughs> this is very cordial. Sorry about you. I keep getting him confused with the other guy. What's the other guy? Kibbener. Kibben is the other guy. Uh, right. We met in the presidential office at the end of the day. He arrived in his signature navy blue suit and he handed me a box of famous Arcasian chocolates before settling down on the couch. Oh, very cosy. Chocolates for me? Oh, you. I do. Oh, do me a great honour, Mr. Richter. How did you know I am a sucker for Arcasian chocolates? Arsenal went up against Bayern as well. Jesus. The English club's doing very well in there so far. So good. Right. Arcasian chocolates. Couches. Let's get down to business. I have had... <clears throat> Sorry to keep diverting off in tangents, but... <clears throat> yeah, I have had... And I don't know if it's linked to my issue down, you know, in the stomach region, but uh, for whatever reason, this started on Friday, right? And on, on this this started on Friday. Jesus, they just they what? They just scored two and now two one up. That's a big turnaround. Anyway, uh, this situation started on. Any doctors out there listening, please? This could be a, this could be a clue to the symptom, to the to the to the what I've got. This started on Friday. Now, ordinarily, my stomach has shrunk. I don't eat a right lot anymore. You know, I exercise a lot, you know, on all the, all the maintaining the healthy weight and whatever else. So my body's got, my, it's got quite attuned to not feeling very hungry. And since I followed glucose goddess principles, it's curbed my, my hunger pangs for snacks and all that kind of stuff. So, but on Friday, just before this problem started, I felt like nothing satiated my appetite so by 12 o'clock at work I'd eaten my breakfast which was some porridge with peanut butter and chia seeds it was normal that was about eight-ish and then at about half an hour I was like oh I'm still hungry now so I had my current tea cake with a cup of tea and then about half an hour later I'm still hungry had a packet of crisps and then I thought oh another, about another hour later it's about now quarter to 12 still hungry had my sandwich so I'd had all of my, my food that I would usually eat throughout the space of the day and finish work and you know I'd eaten it all by 12 and then I went home early about half 12 and got home for one to finish my day at home and I was still hungry so I had a big bowl of noodles and that pretty much satiated my appetite not before after the noodles I had some chocolate so I'd had all that food and that's very unusual for me I just couldn't feel like I just felt really hungry all the time and I went to my friend's house and was like oh I can't eat much more I've had a very bad day I've had a really bad day and then I ended up having a pizza half a pizza and some doner meat and some chips and half a burger and that was Friday and then I've had the same situation today where literally I'll eat something what I normally would eat during the course of the day and I'm like no I'm still hungry 
still hungry. I'll have uh, I'll have some of this. I'll have so I've had half an Easter egg. Uh, I've had half an Easter egg, white chocolate Easter egg. Eating that, polish that off, packet of crisps. I had, me, I had me lunch at about one o'clock, which is really early for me when I'm working from home. My lunch was at about three. And then, I, as you saw me on stream drinking, I had a cup of soup. Uh, I'm still still hungry. So yeah, this this kind of ravenous appetite that I've suddenly developed is a new thing. And coming to think of it, talking out loud, I think it's probably linked. I like a lower stomach infection. Can happen with ulcers or a cut on the stomach itself can mess with nerve signals to the brain. Yeah, telling my brain that I'm constantly hungry. That, that, that makes sense. You do realise though, that if I go to the doctors with this problem, they'll probably prescribe something like Lanzaprol, right? They'll, 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 they'll prescribe something like Losec or Lanzaprol anti-gastric pills to start with. Oh, see if that helps, because that's what doctors do. GPs haven't got time to assess you properly. They just chuck, pill, chuck pills at you and see how it goes. I can guarantee you now that's what's going to happen. I guarantee it. Um, and then if that doesn't sort the problem out, I know what they're going to do next, and I dread it, because <laughs> I've had it done once before. And it's a camera down the flipping throat job. Now, the last time I had a camera down the throat was when I had acid reflux for, for, a, for a period of about two months. <clears throat> and what they found is they found some wear and tear in my stomach. Now, this is going back about four years ago now. Oh, lower stomach. Oh, that's up the bum. Oh. What's worse? I don't know. What, what is worse? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so when they did this camera down, uh, they found a little bit of wear and tear in the stomach. Now, I don't know if wear and tear in the stomach uh, can heal itself over time, or whether it's you've got wear and tear in your stomach and therefore you're knackered. They didn't seem to expand on that bit. They just said, st st don't eat anyone, keep off spicy food and keep off alcohol. Uh, so, if you, if you recall that uh, evening, <laughs> After being told that, I went to a Christmas, because it was December, I went to a Christmas party, which was at an Indian takeaway, an Indian um, restaurant, where I had curry, spicy, and loads of alcohol. <laughs> Less than 24 hours after the doctor told me not to do that, but anyway, it was Christmas, doctor. So I, I, I have got a history of uh, a little bit of wear and tear in the stomach, so perhaps actually come to think of it. There could be some kind of links there. Anyway, I did say I wasn't going to harp on about it, but it, it, it just literally it just came to me about this ravenous appetite. Cut down on spicy foods? No. I'm a bugger, me, you know. I'm a bugger for doing as I'm told. I'm a real bugger. And I've always said that if I ever got told that I've got diabetes and cut this out and cut that out, I'm like, no. I'll just have to live with the consequences because I like my food. It's a bit of a silly, a bit of a silly attitude. But uh, you know, cut down spicy food. Maybe I could cut down spicy food because I don't know. You know, the food doesn't have to be spicy to be full of flavour, does it? You know, you can have paprika. It's not spicy, is it? It's flavourful. It's not hot. I can go with cumin's not spicy. I mean, they're classed as spices, but they're not spicy. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. Carry on. Uh, oh, this, this is all because he's talked about chocolate. This is what's brought this conversation on. Chocolate, because I was talking about the, f the food. Anyway, thank you for the gift, Mr. Richter. Arcasian chocolates. Very nice. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Ray. He took a folder from his briefcase and flipped it open. I could see the scribbles he'd made in the margins of my draft proposal. I don't want to see the doctor before Saturday, though. Just in case. This is really bad, isn't it? This is really bad attitude to have. 
I don't want to see the doctor before Saturday. It's never happening. I'm never getting into the doctor. When I bring the doctors tomorrow, because I'm going to bring the doctors tomorrow, I think. I think I've had this now long enough. Um, they won't get me in this week. Unless they're that concerned that it's, an, that it's urgent, which is, I don't think it is. Um, I don't want to see the doctor before Saturday. In case they turn around to me and say, oh, we need to just keep off alcohol for a little bit. Uh, hello, Doctor, I've got a party stream coming up. I can't do that, thanks very much. I'll start on Sunday. How about that? Spicy food? To keep off that as well? No, Doctor, I've got a party stream coming. I've got to order a takeaway, and it'll involve spicy food. Can't do it, Doctor, I'm afraid. Just give me pills that'll lie my stomach, and I'll start on Sunday. How about that? I have to say... I'm surprised by this proposal you've prepared for the new constitution. I really do not understand your reasoning behind some of the changes. Well, which changes are they, friends, Victor? What parts don't you understand? Vintage. Vintage story. I don't know, I think that's a game. Don't get me wrong, I like your draft. As I've already stated. I'm just shocked you listened to our demands. Oh, it's, it's pleasantly surprised. Decreasing the electoral threshold and the term limits. That's more than we hope for. How does the USP feel about that, Mr. President? Is this political suicide or did you actually manage to get the party behind your changes? I seem to recall that our conversations with uh, the USP went really well when we were discussing um, the changes. So, as far as I'm aware, the USP is in agreement. It's down to you guys to get it over the line. I have my ways and means, Mr. Richter. I mean, look at this face. Trustworthy as hell. Mrs. Tory didn't seem to be extremely enthusiastic about the new constitution. Are you sure you have all the votes needed? Well, she assured me. Well, she's lied to me. I believe that the Chief Justice has her ear. And the old guard is doing their best to make sure you fail. Are you aware the old guard has been reaching out even to PIF... PF, we can't call it PIF GP saying it. Uh, PFJP members? I hope you're doing something to contain this mess. Mess? I didn't see. I don't see a mess. I think we were like ten signatures short, but I don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that a mess, would you? Of course they are. Who, who would have thought, a bit of sarcasm, who, who would have thought that them old dogs would meddle in all of our affairs? Hey, ooh, oh, shock horror. Listen, we know what they're up to. It's not a surprise, but we shouldn't worry. We have our own insiders in the Supreme Court, if you get my drift. Can't remember her name, is it Nia? Who, who's the insider that we've got? I can't remember her name. <clears throat> So you have a plan? But even if the changes pass in Assembly, how are you going to get such an anti solace proposal past the Supreme Court? Should we disclose to him that we have connections inside? I don't want to. I don't want to go down that line with this guy. I don't want to tell him my, what, I, what I've got and what I haven't got. <clears throat> or maybe we should open and honest what's he going to do he wants it to pass so he's not going to really he's not going to dissab us in the back about it is he he wants he wants it to pass so i don't think i think we can trust him okay we're going we're, we're going we're going to trust him Look, we have connections ourselves i'm the president for heaven's sake you think i'm stupid Oh, question mark. 
is Mrs. Edmonds one of them? I don't recall it being Isabel Edmonds. <laughs> Mrs. Wagner assured me that she's a lock. <laughs> what? I, I can't remember. I don't know names of justices which are swaying one side or another. Uh, is she supporting us? What does she look like? I think I think she may be. Is she a centrist? She's a firm believer in democracy. Oh, she's a centrist. Yeah, I think Nia said that she could sway the centrist, right? I think she said so. I'm not going to say she's a lock. You know, she's on lockdown, baby. Uh, no, she, yeah, she's supporting us. Oh, that's good news. I hope that you will succeed, Mr. Ray. I respect what you're doing inside the USP. I will do my best to flip the Supreme Court as well. You can count on the PFJP's votes. I just want your promise that you will give us proper credit and finally do something about the unbalanced representation of our party on state television. Hey, we've got me we, we've got contacts in the media, Mr. Richter. We can sort that out. Speak with our contact. Finger in many pies. For good purposes, of course. For decades, your party has been doing whatever it could to stay in power whilst keeping the PFJP silenced. If we're to be on the same side, I expect you to finally acknowledge all the wrongs that have been done and act against the solid state apparatus in full force. Ooh, what does that involve exactly? Do not blame the USP. Well, who else are they supposed to blame? I mean, it's history, though. Of course, I can't deny my party's disreputable actions. We don't deny it. We don't, need it. We don't deny it. But no, yes, of course, of course. We are in this together. We should do what is necessary. We're not going to go too, too, too ham here, I don't think. That's great to hear. I hope I can rely on you. In the upcoming votes, we expect the USP to rally behind your proposal. I can assure you, you'll have the PFJP's full support. Don't doubt it. Together, Mr. Richter, as we take out a chocolate and offer him one, we'll get this constitution changed. I'm looking forward to it. Was there anything else? Before you leave, I'd like to address a few things I've heard about you. What things? Let's not go down that line in case it opens up conversations that's going to piss him off. Pardon me, French. Uh... I've not heard, have you heard anything? Oh, also to... Oh, of course! Wasn't he the one that was doing um, off-grid visits to Arcasia? The Arcasian chocolates? Oh, of course! Ooh! I kind of do want to ask him. <laughs> Spot, yes, that's the, that's the one, yes! I kind of don't want to ask him what he's here, really, but we don't want to upset the apple cart so close to the constitutional reforms, if you get my gist. We can tackle him about these after the reforms. I mean, if the game gives us a chance, it probably won't, but uh, that would be my thinking if I was sat there right now. Anything else before I go and tell my guys to vote for the... Yeah, I just want to tell... Put my finger on you and... Well, you can go do one now. How dare you accuse me? No, Mr. Richter. 
I'm looking forward to our cooperation. We shake hands. It's nice to have a president that we can finally have a dialogue with. Huh. I'll see you in the history books. Have a nice evening for now. He leaves the room. Any change of the growth line? No. News articles. Swordland today. Victory Day celebrations. Jen, the nationalist stronghold of Swordland, is gearing up for a massive celebration of Victory Day. According to the mayor, this year's festivities will be the biggest yet, with politicians from across the country, including the president, expected to attend. Victory Day, which commemorates the end of the Swordish Civil War, is celebrated throughout Swordland, but the largest and most extravagant celebrations always take place in the cities of Anrika and Jen. According to the mayor, this year even the Anrikans will be in awe. The city, which has a long history of nationalism and militarism, uses the holiday to dispel its military might, a display rather, its military might and patriotic fervour. This year's celebration promises to be no different, with parades, fireworks and speeches planned throughout the day. As always, there are concerns about the potential for violence, especially given the current political climate, but officials are confident that security measures will be sufficient to ensure a safe and successful event. And somebody has seen Mr Richter entering our office. Okay. You don't know what we said though, do you? So go away. The Shaven Times. Richter backs Reigns reforms. At a party conference today, the PFJP, or the PIFJP now that he's gone, uh, came out in support of Anton Reigns' constitutional changes. Leader Friends Richter <clears throat> announced that the proposal resident, uh, President Reign had submitted to them met their party standards for democratic reform. It's time our parties stand together in order to make the changes to our outdated constitution, said Richter, calling his party members to give support to the proposal. Despite a complete show of support from the PIFJIB members, the group's deputy chairwoman, Ms Suhail, protested Richter's calls for bipartisanship uh, and blamed the party leadership for handling, sword, uh, handing Swordland to President Rain on a silver platter. She was seen leaving the meeting during Richter's speech in protest. It is unclear whether the draft that will now go before the Assembly is Rain's original one or if it has been changed with Richter's input. It is also unclear if Mrs Sahail's protests will gather support within the party against the proposal. What is clear is that with the Pifjib's votes, Rain's chances for successfully passing the reforms in the Assembly just got a lot higher. Is it reform time? Is it reform time? Oh no it's not. It's not reform time just yet. Oh dear. How things have flipped around so quickly. Piff Jib. I bet that went down well as well. Against Arsenal. It was an ex-Tottenham player. Bloody hell fire. Ironic or what? Piff Jib Conference. He will be giving us his full support. Let's see if they, let's see if they listen. Right. Award company contract. Oh, so of course in the last session we... Um, oh, we're going to have to pay for this, aren't we? No, we've already paid once. We can't be paying again, surely. Uh, we, we, we commissioned um, improvements to Burgess Farming, right? Uh, right. We're going to have to go Saudi State Corporation here. We're going to have to. <laughs> We're going to have to. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. I would love to go Taurus Holdings again. Because they were successful with the highway project. And although it required a bit of a extra budgeting, uh, ultimately, you know, we stick with, we stick with them. They, they were successful the first time, why not? Although this is not a highway they're building now. This is farming. So... Um, we cannot afford to go minus six. That's, that's just outrageous. Uh, so, yeah. I can just imagine Lilius's face. She'll be beaming. Oh, finally, you've picked the sort of stake over. You've seen sense. I can just picture her face now. No choice, Lilius. Out of necessity. We're bankrupt. Jesus wept. How low does this have to go before we are in a massive crisis? Because minus five, I was told that the it depends on how negative your growth bar is. And given that our growth bar is negative and we're minus five, I can't see a way out of this at the moment. 
But uh, hopefully we'll get an event in the next turn or two that gives us at least uh, plus two to our budget. Uh, minus eight. Maybe I've been overly concerned about this budget situation and maybe I've, we should have we should have spent a bit more frivolously earlier on. Minus five, nobody's batting an eyelid here. And there's me, penny pinching, turning things down when we were like minus one. Maybe because it's scripted it won't be too bad. I think the key, I think the key, which might have been the clue, was when Simon said in that meeting that we can take on more debt. Didn't he say that, remember? I wasn't imagining it. We were sat in that meeting around with all the big wigs, all the money people, and he said that we can take on more debt. So I'm wondering if that is actually, yeah. I mean, it's not telling you how much debt you can take on, but I think that was the game maybe telling us that during this next period, uh, we they're going to give us a bit more wiggle room with the with the debt. So we've done what he said. You said you said Simon, we can take on more debt, and therefore I have taken on more debt. How dare you misadvise me? I'm, you're fired. So I think, yeah, I, I, thinking about thinking back to the last session, what he said, I thinking and, and and how the growth line just flipped like that. It went from positive to poof, like that. It's definitely a scripted event, this. So I think, um, I think the game is just allowing us to ride this out, testing our limits. Because I'm sure some people may well have turned down some of those bills and acts, thinking, oh, I can't go into any more negative. Uh, but we're like, yeah, we're listening to our economic minister. He said. Bring on the debt. You gotta spend money to make money, people. Okay, education. Now, this is something that we do want to invest in. Although, we can't invest any more money in education right now because we've invested money in education from the outset and hopefully that will be enough to keep y'all ticking over. And this is uh, Chiara, who we get on very well with. Don't ask for money. After a meeting with the rector and a brief tour of the University of Valgan, we gathered in a room with Chiara. The entire campus was visible from the windows. Students were reading books, studying and having picnics under the trees. It reminded me of my own times in Le Chaven Business School, at least the more carefree moments. Reminiscing about the past. <sighs> ah, indeed I am, Kiara. It had its ups and downs, but hey, on the whole, it's still pretty fun. And now we're growing old and bitter. <laughs> Let's not get sidetracked. I want to start off by saying this. Can I have minus four budget? Can I have four budget, please? <laughs> I want to build a new university. It comes as a welcome surprise in Swordish politics to see a president uphold their promises regarding education. I am making sure that the additional funds are being used in the best way possible in order to resolve structural issues. S speaking of, yes. I want to thank you for allowing me to lead our education system in the right direction. By removing nationalist indoctrination and traditional teachings, we have unlocked the potential of the next generation. The students of now will thank us in the future, President Rain, for we have unlocked the potential of critical thought this society desperately needed. In this way, you have surpassed all the leaders before you. Of course, don't downplay your own part in this, Chiara. Teamwork and all that. <laughs> I am optimistic about the path that lies ahead of us now. She nodded and brought out a stack of papers from her bag. Spinning her ballpoint pen, she went through the papers, organising some of them together. Our ministry has prepared the necessary framework regarding how to spend our increased education budget. I have outlined three potential options. 
We can build new rural schools, improve the standards of existing ones, or increase salaries for all education workers. We have the capacity to implement only one of these options. Rural schools automatically gets my attention. We've got an affinity with rural areas. Tell me about this plan to build rural schools, uh, Kiara. The issue is very critical, as we are losing many young people to ignorance and illiteracy. Swordland's rural population is full of untapped potential. With enough education, these people could be an asset to our workforce and society. Look at how United Contana is pushing past Arcasia in education and research. It's because most of their rural populace has access to schools. And what does improving rural schools entail? Where to start? At the very least, they need new equipment and materials. Many of these schools are facing a shortage of desks and textbooks. The ones that aren't haven't been updated since before the Sol administration. If teachers lack the resources to give Swordish youth a proper education, it can be as bad as if they don't go to school at all. Okay. And why should we increase the salaries of education workers? The job itself should be held in high regard and be compensated accordingly. These are people who have chosen to dedicate themselves to the betterment of others, to helping raise the next generation. We ought to give them what they deserve. Okay, thank you. Oh, there was two rural options. Build new rural schools. Improve rural education by purchasing new materials and upgrading old school equipment. Ah, okay. I see, I see, I see. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, building new schools or improving the quality? I kind of live by the mantra of quality rather than quantity. Um, you know, we've, we've invested in some of the more rural uh, access links, so perhaps it might be a little, not in every single a state within the country I suppose but you know ultimately that would be our mantra giving rural more 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 better you know better transport access to transport links so hopefully it will be easier for them to get to the schools even if it is a little bit further away than if we were to build more more of them uh, improving the quality I think is is a sound sound strategy uh, so we'll go with that one yeah improve the, improve the quality uh, by purchasing new materials and upgrading the old school uh, equipment. Let's go with that one. Ah, that will definitely improve the education experience for our children. Okay, well, that's all there is for now. I have talked with Miss Suno, it's my secretary, right? Yeah. To schedule some time to discuss the curriculum. She's a very astute woman, your secretary. You may want to consider promoting her. We will meet again very soon. Keep up the good work. She put the papers back in her bag and left the meeting room. Okay. Assignment started. Sana. Situation updated. Improved rural schools. Okay. And five news articles. Something's hit the fan. Right. Situation. Improved rural schools. So the recent investments made towards rural schools have brought about a noticeable improvement in the quality of education offered. The classrooms have become larger and better equipped with modern teaching tools, which has greatly benefited students in these areas. This has helped to bridge the educational gap between urban and rural areas, making education more accessible to all. As a result of these improvements, more students are enrolling in rural schools, and the overall education standard in these areas is steadily increasing. We like the sound of that. Modernised education techniques, good urban institutions as well as uh, improving rural institutions, 
you've got improving working conditions for the workers so uh, yeah next we will be addressing the curriculum as well so that will hopefully change inaccessible rural education is still an issue though it's the distance thing you see but hey we're working on it we're working as well as we can with the means that we've got when it comes to education we're all over it like a rash in the news Oh, hang on. This is that, that case. Today, the politically motivated and controversial court case by Isha, Ishval Erson has made its way to the Supreme Court to be reviewed. The governor of Berger, of course, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dictator B B Felix Bron here, has, dim oh, has, uh, has dismissed the presence of systemic racism in the region of Berger and accusations against his resettlement policies, citing that the Bluedish have been influenced by the Bluedish Freedom Front, who wishes to radicalise the people for their dark aims. All eyes are now on Chief Justice Hawker and the Supreme Court to determine if the case has legal grounds or not. Many justices have already come forward to dispute the claim that the Constitution is not being upheld by the state of Swordland when it comes to the treatment of the British people. So we were in the last session talking about how we were going to approach restructuring Berger and that special zone. <laughs> Overblown, yes. New mega project, Sana Agricultural Zone. And the Sword Estate Corporation has been awarded with the contract. Yeah, so we're, so we're investing in the Berger region. We shall be getting rid of that special zone eventually. Oh, you bet we will be. So, you know, this is all, hopefully, that olive branch that I said that I wanted to extend way, way, way back at the start of the campaign. It's one of our things that we were looking into. So it's, it's coming into fruition slowly but surely. Swordland today, Valen refugees fleeing to Swordish border where they have been turned away. A wave of people have been attempting to flee the conflict. Matters are becoming increasingly complex. International reporters are no longer being allowed inside Valen. <laughs> I wonder why. How will we deal with the influx? Perhaps we're going to be asked specifically now, rather than just in a meeting with somebody. Maybe we're going to be put uh, to, 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 to the test here. I think we're going to let them in. It won't go down well with the, with the, with Mr. Smolak, but um, I did say I was regretting the decision to, to, to be overly harsh with refugees. So if we get that option, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, uh, it could jeopardize the trade deal though. That's the only issue, but um so be it we've done other things to try to bolster our economy radical urson case goes to the supreme court a fearless bluedish lawyer and civil rights activist has taken on governor felix braun in a high stakes lawsuit hmm we know all of this already so it's just now in the news it's all over the press in a glimmer of hope, the Supreme Court has accepted to review the case. But let's be real. When has justice ever been served in this country? <laughs> the corrupt judicial system, with no more corrupt than also Hawker as the Chief Justice. Good luck, Mr. Erson. Press freedoms in UC, uh, a diminishing space. Oh, well, mm, interesting. The People's Daily Tribune, once hailed for its objective reporting, has experienced a 50% drop in its content distribution due to stringent censorship. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Sounds very much like Valen at the moment. Those pesky press are getting silenced and they don't like it. CSP Unity Conference, recently held in Galmland, marked a pivotal juncture in resolving ideological dissonances within the Alliance. Uh... Ah, boring. Very dull. 
Some reports are worth reading and some reports are worth putting in the fire. <laughs> but if you cut through all that waffle, there's useful information in there, Mr. President. Ah, don't bore me with this new wider political nonsense. But you're the president, you should be abreast of world affairs. Ah, shut up. And bring me some more of the, Bring me the last of those Arcasian chocolates, will you? Right, what have we got? Gas on state shares divestment. That's money. Could be good, could be bad. Briefing on curriculum in schools. And there's a report here. Oh, the Ministry of Justice has reviewed the case and put forward its concurrence opinion before sending the dispute to the Supreme Court. Oh, that's the Ministry of Justice. And it was Justice Nia Morgner who came forward, agreeing with the case, and pointed out the majority court dissent would do disservice to the imprisonment. So Nia's pushing for it. She's doing it, but she's doing her bit. Okay, where do we go first? Let's... Let's go money first, potentially, and then curriculum. Just in case there's a cost with the curriculum. I don't think there will be, but just in case. Oh! Given the financial landscape revealed by the Gasson report, a strategic decision on the divestment of our shares in Gasson looms. It is now possible to consider selling an amount of our stake in the company or keep our shares for a potential future profit share. The future outcome will vary based on the active share price of the company. Now, if we were to sell our shares, would that go into our per that's not, that would go into our personal wealth? We haven't got shares in gas on personally, have we? It was it was an Arcasian based thing that we had our shares in. This would probably give us government budget. The government has shares, right? As much as it's tempting, I kind of want to keep the shares. I mean, it's a bit hit and miss. Obviously, the shares could crash and we would lose out on this opportunity. Uh, similarly, the, sh the shares could boom. If Rundberg invade the share prices, it won't be very good, will they? Oh, what do we do? Oh... We can't predict the future, can we? We can't predict the future. Do we? Do we? Do we deal with what we what we what we've got in front of us, which is a, a really really bad situation with the government fund uh, government budget, and deal with it now and just get some money? But that's that's another good point. If we do sell our shares, does that mean that Reezy have a bigger share and control? That's a good point. <coughs> Because we were the majority partner at the moment. We're like, was it like 5149 or something really silly? I don't think I don't think things are going to get worse. I think I think things will get better. I'm being optimistic here. I'm an optimist. Well, so, uh, our personal wealth comes into it because, well, the, the, because we bought, we we invested some shares early in the game. And I just wanted to make sure that the, the the shares that we're talking about weren't those particular shares, but those shares that we invested in were to do with some kind of technology company. So I don't, it's, it's definitely not that. Um, we've signed a bank bill. You know, things are going pretty well, apart from the negative growth line. But, you know, investment opportunities have been invested in. I think we'll be, I think we'll be fine. Oh, I hate this decision. No, we're keeping our shares. We're keeping our shares. Keep the shares. I'm not going to sell my shares. I'm going to cling on to our shares. Just in case things get better. We don't want to cash out too early. Right. Now she's going to ask for money. Why don't you sell your shares? You could have put them into the curriculum. Oh, shut up. Shut up, will you, Chiara? Don't rub it in. Chiara has scheduled a short meeting at the Ministry of Education to discuss the current curriculum taught 
in schools. The ministry building was located in the government district right next to the Ministry of Health. It was tall, narrow and wedge-shaped, like a slightly open book. Near the front gate there were many statues of world-renowned scientists and thinkers. The largest, of course, was of Artvin Einstarven, the greatest scientist of all time. Oh, really? Uh, good evening, Ollie. <laughs> Artvin Einstarven. Above the main entrance was a familiar inscription. In Stratton, Sis, Er, blah, blah, H, I, 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 R. Education is the premise of progress in all societies, in all families. <coughs> inside the building, I was greeted by Kiara's assistants. They led me to a meeting room where she was waiting inside. She stood and gripped, gripped my hand. Ollie, good evening. Uh, the recession is going fantastically well. As you can see, we've plummeted even further into debt, but it's all part of the plan. All part of the plan. That's why the president is still smiling. We've got this completely and utterly under control. Although we had a bit of a shaky start to the stream, because my computer crashed after the game had pulled a funny turn on us. <laughs> the game made us create our character again when we loaded up the last game save and made us go through our first day in office again. But then picked up from where we left off and we've got all our icons back now, so kind of strange. But anyway, <clears throat> we prize our hand away from Kiara's vice-like grip. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Kiara. I will cut straight to the chase. Our progressive reform of the Swordland education system is well underway, but there is still one sticking point. It involves evolution versus creationism. Oh, that old, uh, that old chestnut. Oh. As it currently stands, schools across Swordland can decide whether to include evolution, creation, uh, creationism, I can't even say it, or both in their curriculum. So hell. Good night, Cham. As hungry as I am, <clears throat> it's getting to the stage where actually I'm uh, quite, <laughs> not say frightened, but uh, you know, quite put out by eating food. I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat anymore. It's causing me some discomfort now. But uh, right, so rural schools often decide in favour of creationism only, which puts students at a disadvantage when it comes to entering university. The effect is especially noticeable among young women. My suggestion is to make the teaching of evolution mandatory and preferably ban creationism altogether. Oh, good grief. It's a bit radical, isn't it? Supernatural nonsense. 
So I'm a little bit a miss. Rem I, I'm a little bit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <clears throat> what is creationism, folks? Can somebody enlighten me? Because I don't have. A, I'm not the biggest evolution creationism. can tell me what creationism is and I can decide whether I like it or not everything was made by God oh religious kind of approach rather than a scientific one I see I see oh. hmm now personally personally that means that I'm much more in favour of evolution. Because, uh, yeah. And somebody that's, ag somebody that's agnostic. <laughs> um, however. Evolution not to be banned, it's dangerous. <laughs> Teaching both and giving people the opportunity to decide for themselves seems like an, a good way to go about things. Supernatural nonsense, I like it. Right, okay. So, rural schools are creationist only, so if we introduce uh, both they're getting an increase in evolution rather than just completely one. So, you know, I think that's a good a good balance. We should let people decide. And who are we to determine what people believe or disbelieve? What if people believe that God created everybody? Well, that's up to them, isn't it? Who are we to ban uh, any sort of uh, education on that kind of thing? You know, religious studies. It was part of the curriculum when I was in school. Uh, <clears throat> So we shall teach both theories. Actually, Kiara, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It's one of the few times we'll disagree with her. Uh, well, that would be one way to compromise, yes. But does creationism really help open the minds of our children? The way I see it, it promotes the blind acceptance of the world as it is. No facts or verification needed. Children should be encouraged to think critically and ask questions. Creationism and other religious teachings hinder that. And other religious teachings. Now, now, Kiara. Anti-religious person here. Yes, this is a good option. Moral correctness? Well, uh, this is the answer that's, 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 that was the reasoning for us uh, picking that is, which is, yes. I don't see the harm in letting students decide for themselves. We're talking about allowing them to think, critically think, you know, let them think for themselves, let them decide for themselves, which, which, whichever they want to believe in and whichever, uh, asp, you know, endeavors they wish to pursue. Honestly, Man, that's a valid argument. Oh, I see. We've won her over. Bloody hell, Kiara. Come on now, expected better of you. Outright banning something it doesn't need necessarily to be banned. Ah, I can live with that. So, oh. Lucian locks on the door. I heard what was being discussed. I agree with you, Mr. President. Excuse me, some urgent business kept me away. Ah, welcome, Mr. Gallard. Mr. President? It's very rare that Mr. Gallard is late, in fact. We should know this. He's always knocking on the precise hour. The precise minute, the precise second that he needs to. Everything all right, Lucian? We're not going to grill him in front of Kiara. Uh, <clears throat> we were just discussing the curriculum, Mr. Gallard. Kiara has made some excellent points. She hasn't really. She's made points that we've just shot down in flames, to be honest with you. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll entertain the idea.
Uh, very well, uh, let's hear them. Uh, continuing from my previous point, it is my conviction that we should require the mandatory teaching of evolution in Swordland's public schools and con cut creationism completely out. <laughs> well, we encouraged her to ask her to tell him. Let's see what Lucian thinks. Lucian, have you got any thoughts on the matter? Him not knowing what our response to that was. If we want children from rural areas to have the same opportunities as their urban counterparts, this is the way. Opening students' minds and reducing the role of religion in schools will also lead to more equality between young men and women. Ha 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 ha! Miss Wilder, don't bring your pet calls into this. Mr. President, there are other considerations you may not have thought about. Although I believe myself in evolution, we must be careful not to alienate our rural conservative voter base. We owe a lot to their support. Forcing their school districts to teach evolution could irreparably damage our standing with them. Every modern nation is reducing or removing creationism in their curriculum, yet we are supposed to allow schools to promote fundamental and, yes, sexist ideas from a thousand years back? So, is that what we are doing now? Copying what other nations are doing instead of paving our own way? If it works, why not? Look at the analysis. It is clear that, my, that the superpowers are doing something right. Should we reinvent the wheel, Mr. Gallard? You speak as if we don't import any influences from other countries. That's not what I said. Their voices started to get louder and louder, and I held up my hands for silence. It's fine, it's fine. I've already made my decision anyway. I just wanted to hear your thoughts, Lucian, and to start an argument about the thing. We can still allow creationism to be taught alongside evolution, okay? The best of both worlds, perhaps the worst. But anyway, it is what it is. Balanced curriculum. Kiara, you said yourself that you can live with that. Yes, although I wouldn't like it. I still believe schools are no place for religion. Oh, so we've, we've basically ticked them both off. Well, we've ticked her off. Potentially going to lose some voters. Oh, well, how? Oh, never mind. It's fine. I shall live with the consequences beyond my head. Kiara looked me in the eye. It's your decision. Don't forget, future generations of swordish youth are counting on you. No pressure. We shall stick with it. Unfortunate, but it will better. But it will have a better outcome than banning creationism altogether. I disagree. Rejecting creationism would have been a signal that we were redirecting Sotland toward a scientifically and technologically advanced future. <laughs> They're still arguing. Good grief. Whoa, policy updates. Here we go. Evolutionary education with creationism. Under new law, creationism doctrines are optional from all educational institutes. However, evolution doctrines must be, must be mandatory. So evolution is mandatory. Creationism is optional. It's a decent balance, actually. Every educational instructor is required to have a certification under evolution subjects to qualify for the job. <clears throat> what was that done for us? Consistent economy. Oh, look. Poof. It's gone back up again. Look at that. Our economic strategy is closely aligned with the type of development doctrine that we are promoting, which emphasizes the importance of promoting sustainable economic growth. Oh, this is good. And the Agland economy also stabilizes due to the investment in the region. Oh, this is looking very good. Oh, things are taking a turn. Oh, oh. 
That's probably from using the sword estate. Yeah, probably so. But hey, we're, this is good news. This is good news. Right, we've got a lot to read. Seven news articles, two reports, and what have we got as a couple of uh, uh, things here? Oh, Victory Day. We're probably required to give a speech here. Okay, and whole sword. Lobbying effort in assembly. Lobbying to start uh, swaying votes. Jesus, we're going all in for this, aren't we? Absolutely all in. Language bill prepared by Kisaro Kibana. <coughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna be completely and utterly not a Not even acceptable. I can. I don't even have to read it anyway. So I'm gonna finish my dinner off. It's only a small dinner today. Uh, although technically speaking, another thing that can cause these kind of stomach issues is if you eat too quickly and ingest a lot of air whilst you're eating uh, and I tend when I'm on especially when I'm streaming I tend to eat far too quickly nowadays uh, you know trying to get my food down uh, so that I can get back to playing which is probably not a good thing either to be fair so maybe I shouldn't eat quickly and just uh, take my time but anyway I'm gonna mute myself so I can eat uh, and then we're gonna uh, I'll go through all the reading and you're just gonna have to read it yourself unfortunately but uh, we won't do any of the exclamation marks until I finished so back with you shortly
Well, there you go. <coughs> it's probably the quickest meal I've ever eaten. <laughs> but it's only because it was small, you see. Which I'm not overly <coughs> too unhappy about at the moment. Although I've had a craving <coughs> for the past two or three days now for uh, some cake. Just like cake and custard. Like, I don't know, it's just some like really like a chocolate fudge cake. Just something really hearty, like a really hearty pudding. Something with custard. I haven't got any in the house, of course, so I, I, I'm loath to order a, a dessert on, uh, on, on, uh, on Just Eat or something. Uber Eats. Ordering just a dessert. Paying 20 quid. By the time you've paid for all fees in the delivery. Just for a bit of flipping cake and custard. But yeah, maybe tomorrow when I go to the office, go to work, I might pop into the, the local supermarket and uh, get myself something. Even something just simple, you know, like a Madeira. Just get a simple Madeira, like one of those little square Madeira cakes and just cut it in half and just put some your own jam in it. Just a bit of a, you know, that's, that's, that's just, that's just, 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 just to cure that little bit of a craving. Clearly, I'm not in a in a health kick mode at the moment. I better get into a health kick mode very soon, because I'm on holiday again in a five weeks, five six, yeah, five weeks. Right. Okay, so the papers basically one paper is saying that. Uh, uh, privatisation is the way to go. The other will say keeping things national is the way to go. We've got uh, a bit of a, a blurb on the curriculum changes here. And what's this? The Ayotaki plan. Okay, very good. Very good, very good. Hello, hello. <coughs> oh yes, I had I have got quite I had quite a lot of leave to, to use up. I didn't have to use it. I, I just chose to use it. Uh, I've got no leave left now, but I'll leave you one from August to August. You see, so um, I'll be going again in November when I get my, my leave year back. I'm also off to Amsterdam in August as well. It's been a it's a very busy year this year for me. It was last year too. You've got to get away while you can. See what's out there in the world, you know? <clears throat> right, we have... Two things to look at here. Okay, that will be the thing that we do last, I feel. Uh, we've got a report here. It's preparing a bill. <laughs> okay. Chief Strategist Lucien Gallard has prepared a well-planned lobbying effort in the Parliament which would specifically sway on the Fens MPs for the upcoming constitution vote. The plan includes lavish parties, gifts and even some political favours. I'm not really down with bribery. However, this is a very important thing and we have worked on this for so for so long so if we have to spend just a little bit of money and it's mr gallard that's organized it and he's usually quite trustworthy then on this one occasion we will do a little bit of smooching it's not really our style but this is not exactly us trying to get some little piddly thing through this is us trying to reform the constitution the history books won't say, oh, the president that got it through spent money on lavish parties to sway people. It will just be the headline. The constitution was changed. And that's what will be remembered. Not how we got there in the minutia of the details. So I think it's worth spending not a generous amount. I don't think we need to spend loads. I think we're not too far away. I think we were estimated to be 130 votes, so we weren't that, that far away anyway. So I think just a little bit, just to grease the wheels seeing as we've got personal wealth to speak of uh i think we should uh, just make sure here yeah, just make sure i 
Okay, I think we're getting close. I think we might get to the constitution decision by the end of the session. I'm going to aim to end the stream around about between quarter past and half past ten. Round about that time. Half past more than likely. It depends what we've got going on in the game as to, as to when it ends. Because if we've got stuff that's happening, then we'll obviously see it through to an end. But, uh, right, attending the Victory Day celebrations. Here we go. So here's Sergei. We've not seen him for a little while. Drove us to the city of Jen, the stronghold of Swordish nationalists, for an event organised by the opposition parties to discuss current events. In reality, it was probably a publicity stunt to show Swordland that the leaders of the assembly could sit around the same table. I'll sit around the table with anybody. It's not my fault if people are childish, is it? The National Front Party, which governed the city, undoubtedly had the biggest hand in the organisation of the meeting. It was not a coincidence that it fell on Victory Day. Mr Kibbener, are you trying something on here? Today was a day of special symbolic importance for Swordland. Every year on the 14th of March, proud patriots from all ages gather to celebrate the end of the Swordish Civil War and Tarquin Sol's victory. Jen had survived one of the worst atrocities of the war, and its Victory Day celebrations were the most jubilant in all of Swordland. Originally, only Peter and I were scheduled to attend, but after learning about new developments with the Ishvael Urson case, Nia Morgner was invited as well. Representatives from both the PFJP and the NFP had told us I wanted to talk about the case in more detail. Oh, really? Nia departed Holsword first. Peter and I left on our own a little later. Peter was sitting next to me in the presidential car, skimming through the morning newspaper in silence. Suddenly, Sergei rolled down the soundproof window. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, we are about to arrive at the Gen Center of Culture. Miss Morgner had already arrived and she will be waiting for you. Peter raised his head to look out the window. He folded the newspaper and laid it beside him. Wow, that was too comfortable of a drive to have been this fast. <laughs> See, I wasn't joking. Sergey is the best. No kidding. My driver Sveta can't handle, a, can't hold a candle to him. Although I sure wouldn't mind navigating her dangerous curves one day. Oh, Peter, Peter, Peter! Nah, I should ride with you guys more often. I can't believe I could actually read on the go. You are embarrassing me, sir. I am no special man. It's the Kadua. Sergey took a left turn and drove through the tiny streets of Jen. The city looked surprisingly clean and well maintained. There was no sign of the destruction the city suffered during one of the heaviest battles of the Civil War. We saw down in front of a colourful plaza overlooking a massive concrete building with a giant sign that read Gen Centre of Culture. Looks like the NFP mayors have really transformed the city. Wasn't this an abandoned warehouse for the longest time? I believe it used to function as a rebel militia base during and a little while after the Civil War. Oh right. The Black Battalion. Hmm. It's been a while since I've heard that name. Have we had the name? Maybe we have. Sorry to bring it up. May it never be spoken again. Sergei stopped the car and went outside to hold the doors. Here we are, sirs. I hope you have a great day. We got out and walked towards the entrance of the building. Every spot around us was decorated with the flags of Swordland. The comically large amount of flags almost fully enveloped the buildings around the plaza in maroon, white and gold. At the entrance, Kazaro Kibbena, the head of the National Front Party, was waiting for us in his iconic brown suit, watching the sky. <laughs> Look at this guy, so full of himself. How did this clown convince the P PFJP to have the trilateral talks with them anyway? Probably the same reason why we're here. Not as if it's victory day, remember? How can I forget? Lucian nagged about the importance of the day for 20 minutes straight. It broke my soul. 
Seeing us arrive, Kazaro approached us with a smile. Thank you for being here on this glorious day, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President. As a former mayor of Jen, it is an honor to welcome you to this fine city. Thank you, Mr. Kivner. We shook hands. Thank you for organizing this, Mr. Kivner. Let's hope that Peter doesn't put any feet in things, shall we? The representatives of the PFJP and Minister Morgner are already inside the private meeting room. Hopefully, we'll be finished before the festivities start. He gestures to the doors behind him. Shall we? Please. Just follow me. We entered the building and walked through a massive conference hall until we approached a door towards the back of the building. We'll have the meeting here. Kazaro opened the doors for us and we entered the meeting room. Piftrib leader's friends Richter and his deputy Manoli Suhail was already seated at the table, the left side of the table. As soon as we entered, Nia came to greet us after showing our seats. Casero sat down next to his deputy, Remus Holstrom. Quite the gathering. Me and my deputy, you and your deputy, you and your deputy. Oh, we're all here together. Oh, how auspicious. This is such a meaningful day. Thank you for coming here on behalf of your parties. Yeah, imagine that, right? Catastrophe. But despite the festive atmosphere, we and the PFJP want to raise a few important concerns about the worrying state of affairs in Swordland. Worrying state of affairs? I think Swordland's been run very smoothly, personally, but anyway, carry on. <laughs> when you start with KA 47s, 74s, anything else, yeah. Oh. Kazaro stopped for a moment to check his notes. Yes, such important concerns, you have to read them up in a notepaper, eh? Can't be that important if you can't remember off the top of your head. Anyway, this is what we're all kind of thinking inside. Preparing to re to rebut anything that comes out of his mouth. <clears throat> oh, very worrying indeed. <laughs> Got your own parrot, have you, Mr. Kibbner? Mr. Richter and his analysts have been working on an analysis of the blue problem. As soon as they brought it up, we gave our support without reservations. Uh, the blue problem, says Nia. Mr. Holt, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the analysis is about racism and radicalization in Swordland. And our main topic is the case of Urson versus Swordland. Please don't try to spin it. Of course, Mr. Hale. Mr. Holstrom just wanted to point out that this analysis was focused mainly on topics related to the bluish people. I refuse to discuss this topic without any bluish representation. It's an interesting stance to take. But no, we have to. There aren't any bluish representations out there. There's no bluish political people, is there? I don't think so. Well, there are, but there's. Well, they're not in the assembly, let's put it that way. Oh, this is an interesting. This is an interesting. Uh, Line, they're quite. Yeah, Mansoon Lek. Yeah, there is, there is, yeah, there is somebody out there. Those are the independents. I 
I mean, how is it realistic for us to actually whip up Mr. Leck? Click of a finger here. I mean, we're all here now, kind of. It's like, oh, we're not going to push it any further. Mind you, we've come here for victory day. Oh, interesting. I mean, if we were looking to be completely uh, olive branchy, uh, then technically speaking, this is actually the correct way to go about things. All parties are here. We're talking about the Bluedish people. The Bluedish people, are, there's no representation for them to even represent themselves here, to put forward their views on the situation. They've been accused of all sorts. You know what, yeah. I'm not really discussing anything here. Not with that blue dish representation. We're supposed to be moving forward on this matter in a manner that's befitting of my vision. Then uh, yes, they should have uh, they should have some they should have their say too. Yes. Actually, says Nia, Mr President is completely right. <laughs> Ah, thank you, Nair. Thank you. Hold up, guys. Let's hear them out first. We are representing the parties of the Assembly here. Peter always has to chip in, doesn't he? If he's, if he's not sleeping with women when he's got a wife and really getting on our nerves, and or if he's not rolling around drunk, he has to chirp up when he should be silent. God's sake, Peter, shut up! We did invite the representatives of the Workers' Party of Bludia to join us, uh, but they refused. Oh, so there was an invite sent to, to somebody. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> hmm. Another proof that they have a different agenda. If they were genuinely concerned for the plight of their people, they would have come today. But their people shouldn't worry. The Sordish patriots are here to defend them instead. Okay, fine. We are here today, it is true. And if you have sent invites out to at least some uh, brutish people and they have refused to come, which I couldn't can't blame them for, to be honest with you, uh, then uh, let it be known that I will listen but to what you have to say, but I will not act on anything before talking to the representatives of the Bluedish community myself. Uh, let's get back on track, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> he gestured at friends. I want to give the word to Mr. Richter to explain the issue. It's really worrying times, as Rod is saying here, that uh, when they are getting along to some degree, Mr. Richter and Mr. Mr. Uh, Kibbener. Oh, what the hell's happening here? <clears throat> Thank you. Maybe they're just being consummate professionals. Our analysis of the current tensions between the Bluedish and Swordish population in Swordland displays a worrying picture. <laughs> and how did you reach that conclusion, Mr. Richter? What in-depth analysis has brought that conclusion to your table? You just have to look, read the flipping papers, mate. <laughs> analysis. Goodness me. I hope you've got more than this. As much as I hate to say it, the threat of the Bluedish Freedom Front is getting real again. The situation with Rumberg and Valen is very concerning. <coughs> the increasingly discriminatory actions of the Governor of Berger are resulting in the radicalisation of many young Bluedish people. Distressingly, the number of radicals have almost doubled after the implication of our armed forces in the Operation Bear Trap. I must also point out that the recruitment numbers of the BFF have significantly increased within nearest communities. Peter frantically looked through his papers. Peter, just chill the out, will you? Poker. Don't take Peter to a flipping poker game, whatever you do. Unless you want his money, of course. Goodness me, papers flying all over. Getting all in a twist. I'm sat there cool as a cucumber. 
this is not new. I mean, the newest thing maybe is a bit new, but none of this is that shocking, really. Uh, that is correct. The reports show that 39 Nuri sanctuaries in Berger are now classified as red threats by the authorities. Many priests in the region are also suspected of having ties to the BFF. <clears throat> okay, that's some useful information. Thank you, Peter. I'll let you off this time. It's one time. <clears throat> we heard about the priest stuff before, though. The Religious Harmony Bill would have directly crippled this network they established within our sanctuaries. As the threat the BFF poses is a direct one, this issue requires direct actions that would bear direct results. I am disappointed by the lack of action taken by the USP administration. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Cuban, let's not uh, try to sugarcoat it. Your bill would have unnecessarily raised the already high tensions. We know this. You did well by vetoing it, Mr. President. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sahel. Our suggestion is to finally enforce the official language of our country as stated in the Constitution. We are working on the Unified Language Act. It is directly aimed at the breeding grounds of the Bluedish Freedom Front. Uh, the police have infiltrated 32 BFF training grounds in remote towns around Berger, posed as middle schools. Despite all the evidence, similar schools keep popping up. And so-called activists are constantly blocking Governor Bronze's attempts to stop these schools, claiming he is attacking their right to language. What, just like you are with this act? <laughs> you can't take away the Bluedish people's right to be educated in their own language. This is insane. Please read the proposal carefully. It does not take away anyone's rights. It only gives the state a way to control the radicalization in these schools that teach bluedish nationalist propaganda. And according to the constitution, the language of Swordland is Swordish. If nothing is being done to enforce that, we are breaching the constitution. This law simply enforces it. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Kibbana, this bill is not strong enough. The Bluedist language should be completely banned. You know people like Mr. Hale or Miss Morgna will never even vote for your watered-down bill. Remus. Kizara repositioned himself on his chair <laughs> and continued. He's got his own pizza, as, as, as Mr. Kibbana, it seems. <laughs> True. <clears throat> does not ban Brutish language or Brutish education. It will instead make Swordish mandatory to learn for everyone living in this country. This will only decrease the tensions in the long term. I mean, I have to see the wording of this act. But making Swordish mandatory, it's not horrendous. I mean, for example, English is mandatory in, in this country. You've got to take English lessons in, you know, literature, language. Uh, <clears throat> not horrendous. Yeah, but I don't think that is the crux of this bill. So we'll see how it's worded when it comes through, when it comes across our desk. That's a fair point. However, the wording of the bill is far too... Yeah, there we go, you see. <laughs> That's not exactly what I was saying. Let me say, <laughs> let me say, let me see the wording of the bill before I make any decisions. Took the words out of my mouth, Mr. Richter. Took the words out of my mouth. <clears throat> the wording of the bill is far too vague to work as intended. It gives the government too much power over educational institutes. I disagree. The language is quite clear and is in line with the constitution, but we can still improve it, of course. It is true that it gives more control, but it is a necessary compromise. Mm. 
<clears throat> yes, I shall have to read it in detail if I can decide whether to support it or not. The PFJP will not allow this bill to pass the Assembly. Uh, excuse me, let's not make statements that the party hasn't agreed on yet. Manoli looked furious. <clears throat> she opened her mouth to respond, then read the room and closed it again. Ah, oh, as if the PFJP has the influence to change the outcome. Uh, if I may continue with our analysis. The situation is also connected to Rumberg. <clears throat> as everybody already knows, in the case of a future incursion, BFF forces in Swordland could become an existential threat. Ooh, interesting. All oh, these are pretty negative. These three are pretty negative here. We're already working on removing the authority of the governor. Ooh, I don't quite want to play that card either in this forum. I mean, they're all going to find out eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna go down this one then. It's, just a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit snappy, but um, we do know this information already. <laughs> so, and I did, I did take the Mickey. If Nagisa was here, he'd be saying, you know, when I when I speak out loud and an option comes quite similar or if not the same, then generally speaking, and what do you? When he opened his clack and just that was like, oh come on, tell us something we don't know, <laughs> Mr. Richter. You're just spouting things that's blatantly obvious here. Uh, but yeah, okay. So tell us something we don't know. We we know this already. Uh, just let me finish, Mr. President. Sorry. <laughs> snappy, Mr. President, there, but this is... <clears throat> Carry on. Just as his time continued. <clears throat> that makes dealing with the armed militants crucial in the short term. I'll be honest, I myself have underestimated this threat. But judging by the current climate... A spark is all the BFF needs to start violence on a mass scale again. Our analysis matches with what the Ministry of Interior shared with us. But despite this fact, we believe the Ministry is hiding information from us, which is actively fueling the tensions behind the scenes. As much I now support a strict response against the BFF. It must also be coupled with the expansion of rights for the Bluedish people. This is the only way to fight against radicalization. Yes, that's a, an approach that sounds uh, in keeping with what I wouldn't mind uh, achieving. Carry on. That is BFF propaganda? What rights are we talking about here? What can a sword in Swordland do that a blood cannot? You are using soft language as a cover-up for your willingness to negotiate with terrorists. You are a BFF apologist, Mr. Richter. Rima shouted the last sentence. Peter tapped on the table to get his attention. Please don't raise your voice, Mr. Holstrom. The mood in the room had turned sour. Is the USP that desperate for Mr. Richter's support now? Menoli bellowed out a loud laugh. Mr. Vecton is the last person to sway the PFJP. What is that supposed to be? Oh, hellfire, this is getting way out of hand. Enough! <laughs> we Bang our hand on the flipping table. We've heard enough of this crap. Everybody went silent and looked at me. Heaven's sake. Very rarely the president loses his temper. Especially not in a public arena. From this point onwards... Nobody speaks until the speaker finishes their point. Is 
says the chairperson. <clears throat> Pizarro and Peter nodded. You heard the man. Please finish your point, Mr. Richter. Yes. Our administration should take all possible opportunities to expand the rights of our bloodish populace while stamping out the BFF militants in parallel. This must be the long-term strategy. However, we require your support with a more pressing matter. This might have very significant consequences for our bloodish citizens and may serve as a dangerous trigger if we're not careful. Friends gestured at Manoli. She carefully placed several pieces of paper in front of her. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, and Miss Minster, as you already know, there is a major Supreme Court case at the moment. Ishval Erson is suing the Governor of Berger, Felix Brown, for infringing upon the liberties of bloodish people and demands that the Constitution be revised. Because of the argument and the implications, Felix Braun and, consequently, the very constitution of Swordland is under trial. The fact is, he needs to be punished and the constitution must be reviewed. When do we play our card on this? This is going to cause holy hell. <laughs> I just want to say it just to see... Uh, Holstrom's face. <laughs> Do you know what? They're going to find out eventually. Do you know what? We're going to say it. We're saying it. We're aware of this case. Actually, Mrs. Sahel. Or Miss Sahel, we shall say. Ms. Sahel. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, we are already working. Oh, let's talk about revoking Revoking. Oh, let's see. Oh. oh, I'm torn. 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 We are revoking it. Yeah, we are. It's not. It shouldn't. It's not. Shouldn't really be a secret. They're gonna find out. Even Nia might have started to touch, might, might raise it. Do you know what? No. I'll stick with me, I'll stick with my guns here. Stick with my guns. We're going to say it. I just, it was, that's like, well, whilst we're saying it, we'll look at this man dead in the eye. We're already working on revoking the current special zone status of Berger, actually. Anybody going to bat, bat an eyelid to that? <laughs> that's great to hear. This will be made inside for now. We will be very happy if you can share the details once they're more concrete. We will definitely give support to that when the time comes, Mr. President, says Mr. Richter. However, the case of Ishvale Erson has a bigger reach than just Berger. Nia raised her hand and spoke. <clears throat> I was actively involved in this case. Because of the implications with the Constitution, there is no way the Supreme Court will agree with Ishvale Erson on all of the points. Not if all three parties of the Assembly support Urson together. We can put pressure on them, and we only need them to agree on a few of those points. Three parties, Richter? Are you being very hopeful there? <laughs> exactly my thought process on that one. Do you know what? We might as well get it out in the open. We might as well to get it out in the open, because if they're not going to support it, there's no point of continuing down this line of conversation. <clears throat> Are you willing to support Urson, Mr. Kibbener? For peace and harmony in Swordland, yes. But perhaps we must clarify the details first. Oh, kill surprise. Okay, plans and suggestions. In short, the plan is to release a unified statement to the justices, declaring our support for Urson and explaining why this is so important. 
The only good result would be if the Supreme Court reiterates its commitment to the pillar of unity in solace. Mr. President, despite previously being against it, I now completely understand why Swordland still needs solism. We need unity more than ever. And Article 6 is that unity. We do not need solist unity! Cassaro stared Remus down and continued. If the court reiterates the definition of sword in Article 6 as an all-encompassing term, they would be acknowledging that Urson and others like him are indeed protected by the rights of the sword peoples, which they are. As a result, the resettlement policy in Dare would be reversed, opening the way for Governor Bronze removal and the de-escalation of tensions in Berger. <coughs> uh, Miss Morgner? <laughs> the, the, the legal lady, Miss Morgner? Uh, that is correct, Mr. President. Interesting. <clears throat> this doesn't fix the core of the problem. Oh, I see. I see the issue. Ah, okay, I see the issue now. Does that mean the existence of the Bluish people is literally not being acknowledged? Exactly. Our current constitution fails to recognise the Bluish people. It's time we abolish the inherent racism in it. The citizens of Swordland are swords. The constitution clearly defines that in Article 6. It encompasses everybody. This shouldn't be up for debate. What racism are you talking about? Solism is based on civic nationalism, not ethnic. I do not understand why someone would go against such a broad and inclusive law. I don't see the commies criticising their identity, Contanen, when in fact the country is filled with different ethnicities. Okay, so this is a very interesting debate. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to put it into the context of English at the moment without I don't want to I, I don't want to verbalize it at the moment <clears throat> oh, I see what you mean like British yeah, okay yes 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 so you can be bluish and swordish together you know kind of combined you're in this you're living in the country so you know there's some kind of term for you so if you want to put it that way I'm thinking of people, I'm thinking of, maybe I'm, think I'm thinking more towards Bluish people that were born in Swordland, for example, rather than say Bluish, well, I think most people, Bluish people will be born in Swordland, no? No? Some, some might say it's terminology, but it's, it, it, it is, uh, not, it is a bit more than that. Identity? Self-identity? Okay, well we're going to take a, a... This is not a stance, but uh, we do need an... Uh, I don't necessarily agree with Mr. Kippener. I see your point. Uh, Article 6 is inherently racist. See, when I first... Yeah, exactly. Uh, when I first read this article, right, without, without knowing anything about the whole situation with the Bluish people and whatever else, and, you know, 
uh, when I read that article, uh, was it, every, everyone's classed as a sword. I actually, when I first read it, I read it as a good thing. Like you, you, I read it as a good thing. You are all, you are all, you know, countrymen. You are all, you know, we're all in it together. We're all one people. That's how I read it when I first read read that uh, blurb. I can't remember. It must have been in the, um, must have been here. I think it was in the law, maybe. Article six and seven, yeah. Every sword is equal before the law. So when I read that, uh, that's how I read it as a good thing. You know, that everybody gets fair rights, fair responsibilities, body, 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 body. Are you all right, Mr. Kibbana? Right, okay. So, um... Every sword. Was it in... Was it, was it in, um... Yeah. It has all citizens as swords, irrespective of their ethnicities or cultures. <clears throat> and all get equal treatment in blah de blah. Uh, right, okay. We're going to have to go down this line because I'm not very happy with the other ones. Keep the peace. No. Uh, I don't want I don't like any of these options, to be quite frank. Although, when he's speaking, he's speaking to what I've just said, to the way I first read it. So, I suppose... We're not committing to anything. Exactly. Does the Millennium call himself Covian before Contan, and why is it that Blues cannot do the same? Why can't the Sword Patriots wish for unity? You have a point. But I must point out that Contana is the word for a geographic entity, unlike sword. This is Swordland. You can subscribe to whatever idea you want, but if you are a citizen, you are a sword. This is how nations work. Oh, the reality is the Blues do not respect nor recognise the laws and authority of Swordland. They'd rather separate themselves from swords and protest the very laws that protect them. So that they can cry about injustice and ask Swordland's enemies to come and save them. I personally do not agree with the Bloods are sword solace crap. I can't believe the words being thrown around at this meeting. Yes, neither can I. In fact, I think... It's probably about time we wrap this up. I've heard enough of this and been here f long enough. I mean, the position of the PFJP should be quite obvious, to be fair. So uh, let's bring this to a conclusion, shall we? Before we risk going around in circles or worse. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the president. Let's sum it up and arrive at the point quickly. I personally somewhat agree with Mr. Kibbener on this. However, <laughs> Mr. Kibbener's loving it. The President's agreed with him. <laughs> Richter's agreed with him. Somewhat agreed, shall we say. However, our position as the PFJP is that the Article 6 does indeed discriminate against non swords And having a positive outcome for this case alone doesn't suffice. We agree to come together in support of Ishval Erson, but we believe our statement should include the acknowledgement of the inherent racism within the Constitution. We must use this opportunity to show the flaws in the Constitution. If the court agrees that there is in fact conflict between the articles, or recognises the description, And the Hawker Court is going to listen to that? Besides, we do not agree with your inherent racism, hogwash, you have to state that it is your party's opinion and does not reflect the NFP. We won't take part in that. That would make the statement look weak and disorganised. 
If there's no consistent strategy, I don't think it would work. Okay. What is the significance of this case? You were talking about uh, the, the wider than just the bloods a moment ago, um, uh, Mr. Richter. I'll be straight with you, Mr. President. If the court rules against Urson, this will most likely turn into a BFF campaign for a bloodish revolution. We ask everybody to recognize this. I and the NFP are ready to push for de-escalation and aid our nation during this dangerous time. I'll be completely honest. I would never have expected that from you. Remus was visibly annoyed but kept himself silent for a change. <clears throat> because the case is now in the hands of the Supreme Court, this ruling will influence all future implementation of the law and the decision-making of the lower courts. We have the Minister of Justice here with us too. I'm sure she would not disagree with what I just said. Nia did not comment but nodded. I'm afraid Mr. Kibbener is right about this. If the court ignores this case now, this may turn into something massive. Therefore, we have to pressure the court not to escalate the already high tensions. <clears throat> Make it independently. Yeah, right. Okay, so what do you think will happen if the court ignores it? Another all-out BFF rebellion, Mr. President. In my opinion, that would be the preferred outcome. If enemies do truly live within our borders, I'd rather have them show their face earlier than later. This is exactly what those damn rums want. They are readying for war and waiting to use the tensions inside Swordland against us. Yes, well, we cannot allow that to happen. It is quite obvious. We definitely can't. Okay, so what is the most likely outcome of this case? The first and most likely option is that the Supreme Court completely ignores the arguments and rejects it in its entirety. If they ignore all of the points and strike against Urson, Governor Bronn will be free to follow his discriminatory policies without any obstacles. And in a possible future case, the court's interpretation of the Urson case will be the basis of all future rulings, which opens the way of suspending the rights of non-swords. Nothing like a bit of case law. It would effectively erase any progress that has been made regarding bloodish rights and will embolden anti-bloodish proponents to follow their actions freely. <clears throat> okay, and that would be disastrous for, for everybody, but particularly for the bloodish citizens, of course. Exactly. That is precisely why our expectation is to see a different result this time. The stakes couldn't be higher. I think I have enough information to be able to say we are deep in the mud here. Yes, Peter. Very deep. <laughs> Peter laughs at his own joke, but nobody else reacts. Goodness me. Well, uh, uh, um, I, I think the NFP stance could do some good for the Blue Dish without provoking the establishment. But even that might be risky bef uh, right before the vote. But the PFJP stance is too radical. I think it will only antagonise the Supreme Court even further and make them give a worse ruling. I think it might be better to keep our administration out of this. I'm not sure if it's worth the risk right before the vote for our reforms. We might lose all of our progress. But the decision is yours. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> Peter's just Peter. <laughs> <clears throat> I think we're quite aware of the why of these 
what the what the outcomes are of both of these. I've definitely heard enough. I don't want to hear any more about this. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> Mr. Richter is wanting to call it outright discriminatory. Mr. Kibner wants to go down the line of the everybody's swords. You know, bloodish people, you've been sword landy swordish. You know, and the Article 6 says before the law, you're a sword, and therefore you, you've got the rights of a sword as well. Although, technically speaking, you know. Um, or we don't want to get involved. Ooh. Holy cow, this is, uh, this is a big decision. This is a big one. This is my last decision of the session. Ooh. Right. I kind of don't want to sit on the fence, though. If we side with the piff jib, right? If we side with the piff jib, we're going to tick off the NFP. And the NFP, the NFP, we don't need their votes anyway. Really. And if it gets Article 6... And if you get and if Article 6 and 7 are changed, happy days, we can make it a lot more clear. Uh, so yeah, I do you know what I think it's actually. I don't think it's a difficult decision this one. In in hindsight, I think it, I think I think this is quite easy. You know, Piff Chip already on our side. NFP ticking them off. Whoopie do. Um, it might be that. <clears throat> it might be that obviously now this is going to tick off the courts kind of thing it's going to be making me maybe make it less likely uh, that they're going to rule in, the, in, the, in that favor but it's a joint statement which would put pressure on the courts you see so i think uh, i think this is this is this is actually probably not as difficult a decision as it might have first appeared to me uh, i i didn't read these articles as discriminatory but you know taking on board you know uh, people's opinions and views on it i can see how it might appear to be and you know that's that's, that's a bit a bit of tweaking a word in here and there, a bit of revision. Yeah, nothing wrong with a bit of revision, is there? So uh, yeah, joint statement. Uh, article six, article six and seven, discriminatory, conflict with the rights of uh, of of people, many people, particularly the bluish people. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll side with Mr. Richter. Boom, there we go. So, okay. But let the games commence. Ah, that's great to hear, says Mr. Richter. <coughs> we'll get to work immediately after the celebrations. After the celebrations? I don't feel like celebrating. I just want to go back home now. I've had enough. After all of this, I've got to go out there and, get, and start bloody Victory Day celebrations. So you have no laugh. I'm drained. Am I getting any wrinkles? I'm not even a real life president and I'm feeling the stress. Goodness me. I'll be honest. I didn't expect a USP president to agree to this. You've proved me wrong, Mr. Ray. We're proving a lot of people wrong recently. <laughs> she was surprised. Richter's surprised that we're, that we're working hand in hand to, 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 to turn the constitution around. I'm full of surprises, me. Ah, it's a shame. Really. Sadly, the NFP cannot take part in this. With all due respect, Mr. Kibner, the NFP cannot merely stay out of it. We must condemn this decision and actively protest it. Yes, yes, yes. We'll talk about that later, Remus. We appreciate all your comments, ladies and gentlemen, says Peter, trying to calm the situation down. But now that the USP stance is clear, we should probably end the meeting here. After bidding our farewells, Cassaro took us outside the building to join the Victory Day event on the plaza. Tensions in the air. 
Holy flipping cow. Right. Oh my god. Whoa, look at this. Look at this. That is the greenest I have ever seen that line. So, foreign investments in mourner's energy sector withdraw. Oh, an unexpected reversal. That's a bit of a shame, but hey. What a line! What a line! Look at the greenness of that! Woohoo! Let's just get some uh, government budget back and we are flipping kicking ass, man! Kicking ass. When it comes to the economy, at least. <laughs> we might as well get invaded by Rumberg. Yeah, but anyway. Right, news! <coughs> USP PFJP hand in hand against Swordland. In the aftermath of the Victory Day celebrations, the USP and the PSJP have issued a joint statement urging the Supreme Court to remove Governor Braun from office and to recognise the conflicts between Article 6 and 7 of the Constitution. Both parties supported Ishfel Erson's arguments, claiming that the Constitution is inherently racist and fails to guarantee equality for all citizens despite the very articles they criticise defining these rights for everyone. The fact that both parties are trying to aggressively intervene in the Swordish judiciary have met with great backlash. We'd like to point out that the governing party being involved with this is a dangerous development, one that can continue with threatening the justices to serve their bidding and to destroy the very constitution that protects our rights as Swordish people. Horsold Post will be watching the developments closely. Ninja Troll, I've seen you around before. I recognise your name. How are you doing? Thank you very much for joining us. I remember your name. I've seen you uh, in the comments many a times. <coughs> Co-investment strategy pays off for Gasom. Ooh, this is good for us not pull, putting pulling our shares out, I think. Resounding success. Strengthen Gasom's financial standing. Reinforced our nation's reputation as a strategic and pragmatic player in the world stage. Turn a critical situation around, paving the way for a brighter future. Okay, this is interesting. The Workers' Party of Bludia has welcomed the joint statement issued by the USP and PFJP in support of Ishfel Erson. Um, they've urged us to take, uh, to take action. Uh, and to use this as an opportunity to introduce changes to the articles in the upcoming constitutional reform. Hmm. The leader of the party will uh, work with us to ensure that the Bluedish population receives justice and equality. Don't you worry, Mr. Ajal. I am taking very, very bold steps. Don't you worry about that. And the radical. <coughs> For too long, the Swordish government has turned a blind eye to the struggles of minority groups, particularly those of bluedish descent. However, it is disappointing that the statement only comes now, after the Victory Day celebrations in Gen. Oh, it is clear that the government and the NFP only care about maintaining their own power. Uh, no. Oh, shut up, idiots. Damn papers. <laughs> <coughs> if the economy goes well quickly, we can start to put money into defence. It might be too late to do that, but you never know. You never know. Right, we are quite a happy, happy place to end it now because we are uh, looking like we're moving into a new chapter. Or a new turn, rather. Oh, no, a new chapter. Chapter 3. Victims of Changes. Okay. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly look at the... Uh, what's what's the next on the agenda? A call for Marcel Curanti. Okay. The Mr. The Mr. Papers. Mr. Papers man. Right. BFF recruitment. Still looking to uh, recruit militants. Marcel calling in a favour. Yeah, what does he want now? <coughs> the papers have been a little bit less favourable recently. Marcel, you need to pull your finger out. What news have we got? 
Heartbreak for FC Enrique as FC Gold Salt kills back to back league titles. World ignores the Blue Dish Pride. And geopolitical. Political assassinations rock Ventry City. What? Two political assassinations. Oh dear. That's not good news. Balgish man shot after burning Agnolian flag. Oh, continues to tensions continue to rise in Heliland. He climbed the flagpole and brought down the Agnolian flag. He was shot by the authorities. Shot in the neck and was killed immediately on the scene. Oh dear, that's getting pretty bad. So this is the start of year three. Is also it's always it one to one chapter per year would make sense, wouldn't it? I suppose. So we're three years into a four. I reckon this. I don't reckon we. I reckon this game we just play one term. I, I think it's one term and then we're done. Is my kind of assumption here. Um, one by one way or another, maybe. But uh, now is a perfect time uh, to end the session. Uh, I said between quarter past and, and half past, and uh, it's, it's 22 minutes past, almost precisely halfway through, <laughs> which is quite uh, quite good timing. Right, uh, whilst I'm live on camera, I'm going to see whether football is a uh, complete utter misery or time to celebrate, because Leeds are playing today, they were playing Sunderland, and it was nil-nil after 60 minutes, Leicester were losing, uh, and if we don't win uh, today, I kind of think we're... Uh, destined for the playoffs. So here we go. Let's have a look at the score. Oh, f sake. Nil bloody nil. I think that's us done. Could this could oh could this decision cost leads? Oh we should have had a penalty for handball. No VAR in the championship folks. Oh dear well, do you know what? It is our own doing. We are in second, but Ipswich have a game in hand, so we have to rely on Ipswich to lose because we've got a better goal difference. And we missed the opportunity to go top. Well, that's a flipping crock. Absolute crock. Well, there you go. Right. I'm sure you're all very interested in that. <sighs> Four games to go. Right, anyway, thanks for joining me, folks. Now, tomorrow, I did say that all week I've got nothing planned. We're going to stream. So I streamed Sunday. I streamed yesterday. I streamed today. All is planned. However, tomorrow, when I said that I'm not playing football, the, the, one, thing that, the one thing that happened that was going to stop me from streaming tomorrow happened. And that was... Um, the group that I'm in on Wednesday, I don't play football Wednesday anymore very often at all, but I do say that if they've got nine people and they are going to cancel the match and I'm not doing anything, rather than have nine people have football cancelled and I'm free to play, I'll play to make the ten so you can all have a game. And they were about half an hour away from cancelling and they had nine people. I was like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> So then I chirped up and said I'll play. So uh, I'm playing football. But it starts at 8. So um, what I'll do instead is I'll do a, a pre-football stream tomorrow. So um, I'll still be playing Baldur's Gate 3 because I've not played it for a while. I don't want to play it. So we'll probably start around about half 5. I can only play till about half 7, so a couple of hours. But it's better than nothing. Uh, so it'll be an afternoon, well, late, e late, late afternoon, early evening pre-football stream rather than the usual stream time so you still get something because I do want to play it but uh, yeah the one thing if they've got like eight or seven people and can't make the numbers up well clearly I'm not going to make a difference am I and obviously if they've got enough I don't put my name down um, but uh, yeah when they've got when they've only got nine like uh, okay I'll, I'll play the deal so yeah but anyway thanks for watching folks we, we shall return to this maybe on Thursday 
Maybe if I play Baldsgate tomorrow, uh, then I'll, I can return to this uh, on Thursday for another pre-football stream. And that'll, that'll mark, what was that, five days streaming in a row? Bloody hell, what the hell's happening to me here? But uh, yeah, have a good one, folks. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you tomorrow for some Baldur's Gate 3 uh, as we as we uh, dust off Volpus's new black robes and see what fun and games we can get up to. Vintage Story trailer. I will have a look at it. Vintage Story. I'll do it now before I forget. You can always put it in the Discord so that I've got it there just in case. But I will. I'll take a look. I'll take a look. So yeah, have a good one, folks. And uh, until next time. I shall see you soon. Let's just hope that uh, when I load the game up next time, we don't have the same saga. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs>